Okay, so if you breathe in through your nose sharply and out, and then repeat that several times. Brilliant. Okay, lovely. You can relax now. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting case. What we have here is a condition called uh, patulous eustachian tube. Now what that is, is uh, what you have is behind your eardrum you have a, an airfield cavity, the middle ear, and then that cavity is connected to the back of your nasal cavity or nasopharynx via a little tube called the eustachian tube. Now normally that tube is closed and it opens when you swallow or yawn, but it's only open for a very limited period of time and that's to ventilate the middle ear and usually when something happens to that tube usually it gets blocked you know it gets blocked quite often or at least I see patients with blocked eustachian tubes quite often it's like the Suez Canal of the body I tend to think of it like that but when it gets blocked you know you have all sorts of weird problems which you know like uh, glue or, or fluid mucus building in the middle ear and if it stays there for ages and ages then the eardrum can get sucked backwards onto the middle ear structures or you can develop cholesteatoma which we've seen recently but this is the opposite of that so the tube is not clamped closed due to swelling or whatever it's just open when it shouldn't be open and um, I'm not entirely sure why and it has it in both ears so what you saw in the beginning segment was the left ear the ear that I'm working on right now is the right ear, but he has it in this one as well. So it's bilateral, meaning on both sides, patulous, meaning open, eustachian tube. And normally when you see this, you would, the immediate sort of suspicion is, ah, this patient has lost lots of weight recently. Not the case here. And the reason that that's the suspicion is because the, well, there's only really a few reasons why it would be open. I mean, it's, it, because there's, you know, if you think about fatty tissue as kind of a supportive, a supportive tissue, it's, it's classed as connective tissue, but it's like there's obviously fat around the eustachian tube. And if you lose a lot of that, see it flexing back and forth there with his breath, he's just breathing normally. Um, if you lose too much fat generally, then that means that there's less support for the eustachian tube and then it will just kind of, you know, flap open. Um, not the case here. He's, be, he's generally well. You know, he's, um, he's been the same weight for ages, apparently, and he's not um, ill, he's not got cancer, he's not taking any medication, his ENT history is clean, tonsils are fine, adenoids are fine, they weren't taken out, he's not had grommets. So I'm not sure why this would happen. You may also think that, okay, well, maybe the muscles around the eustachian tube are dysfunctional. So you have two muscles, you have the tensor veli palatini and the levator veli palatini so you may think oh there's something wrong with those muscles but then what that's less likely if you have it on both sides that kind of makes me think that there's something going on in the back of his nasal cavity but um so he has it on both sides but i know he's had it for a long time because i saw him a year ago and that's when i picked it up and he didn't know he had it because it actually believe it or not even though his eardrums are kind of just going back and forth all the time um, it doesn't bother him and he hears a kind of you know weird kind of clicking sensation when he sneezes and stuff but otherwise he, you know he doesn't doesn't he doesn't mind it um, but I did send him through to ENT anyway and basically just discharged him um, and their kind of thought was if it's not bothering him then why would you intervene surgically but they didn't have a look up his nose which I was disappointed by because I want to know what's causing it so We'll have a look at his left ear in just a moment, which is what you saw at the beginning of the video, but we'll have another look at it again. And um, I suppose the only, I don't actually know how this is treated, to be honest. I know very little about this condition, other than weight loss and kind of m muscle dysfunction. I don't actually know what else would cause this. Um, in terms of treatment, I think a surgeon can go in and basically deliberately create trauma at the back of the nasopharynx to cause a buildup of scar tissue possibly but then that might cause the opposite problem of eustachian tube dysfunction where it's constantly closed if you cause too much trauma i'm not sure i think you can temporarily treat it with nasal spray 
in the sense, but I think that's only kind of a um, throwing a rug over the issue, really. You can see where it's uh, on, the, on the left side where it's moving back and forth. That might be an area of weakness. It's certainly, I get the impression that that area of the eardrum is weakened a little bit. Um, but there you go. So th this is bilateral, bilateral meaning on both sides, patulous meaning open and eustachian tube. So patulous, bilateral patulous eustachian tube dysfunction. Very interesting case. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.